So this is actually a continuation of the previous pose. Um, I crossed the section boundary and I wanted to have them separated in writing. Uh, so this is actually uh, was done yesterday uh, on the first, but I'm posting it the next day just to kind of give you some idea that I've, I've moved on to the next page. Um, so here we go, 6-4. So this is actually the very first uh, time I'll do riveting. And uh, there's, I don't get to that in this video, but there's, there's some prep work I'm still having to do, specifically with the front spar, which is what you're seeing me drill uh, right now. Um, a lot of what I'm doing in the beginning there was some minor drilling of the front spar and getting the front spar doubler drilled, deburred, prepped, and just generally ready to go. Uh, gonna have to uh, machine countersink it and uh, dimple the front spar itself, which we'll see here shortly. And here you're getting to watch me do my favorite pastime in this whole plane creation process, and that is deburring. I said it before, I say it again. It is not a sexy process, and you're gonna do it a lot. I also talk to myself a lot while making this, usually reading the plans over and over again, and that's what I'm doing here. Sometimes I have to read two or three times because I'm not always exactly sure what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, better to read the instructions multiple times and fully understand them before you get in and, you know, possibly screw it up, which is the last thing I want to do. But after two or three minutes of reading and making sure I understood, it all came down to basically dimpling four holes. <laughs> and so that's what I'm doing here. You uh, working with the, the DRDT2 to dimple the four necessary holes and make sure that they are dimpled in the correct direction, which is kind of important. And I, and I feel like the docks uh, were not great in that regard. Four of the holes on the bottom of the doubler have to be machine countersunk, uh, and I had to go over the docks multiple times before I fully understood which four and in which direction. Uh, ultimately, I think it, it only matters that you dimple the correct way, and then once you machine countersink, it'll be obvious how they sit on top of one another, which I'll show here. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. Probably wasn't the best idea to try to hold these by my hand, but uh, it worked out in the end. And, uh, you know, so long as you don't countersink a finger, I guess it'll be all right. Also, my recommendation, as before, would be to countersink shallowly, test fit the part, and then countersink again if necessary. Uh, you can always cut more out. You can't uncut once you've already cut, and that's what I've done here. I had to do it two or three times before I felt like the two parts uh, laid flatly together the way they should. And this is what it looks like all stacked together. After this, I moved on to the rudder stop parts, um, and the first thing I had to do was find the darn things, uh, which led to this uh, message to Vans. So I don't know if Vans is ever going to listen to this, but one of the things that I would uh, highly recommend would be to provide a list of all of the part IDs and then which bag that item is or which which sub section that that item is in because you have this situation where things aren't really separated into sections you know as you work through them uh, you would hope that they were in the groups uh, according to what you're working on them, and they're not. They're kind of all over the place. It'd be really amazingly handy if the parts that you are actively trying to work on were grouped in some way that made a little more sense. So, for example, in 6-4, I have to find R107 um, and you know work with it, but I don't know where it is. Um, I've got a lot of pieces and parts everywhere, but I don't know in which section or group it is. And the instructions that they've given, I say the instructions, the packing list they've given, uh, the parts are all over the place. They're just, it's just kind of random. And so I'm perfectly fine with the, the sub kits being grouped the way they are, but just a piece of paper that goes in part order so that you could easily look up part, you know, 11 or 1007 and see, oh, it's in subkit 5 or whatever. That would be amazingly helpful. Separate the R7 rudder stop part shown in figure 2 into individual components. The R, 107A striker plates, that's those guys, 
and the B rudder stops. File off any remaining stubs and deburr the edges. The striker plates will be used in the rudder assembly and you can set them aside for now. All right. <clears throat> Let's go upstairs and do the deed. These are pretty small parts in the grand scheme of things. Uh, watch your fingers on the belt sander. Just advice. All right, we have rudder stop parts. And here we have a long section of me going through and getting that uh, lower, or I guess that's the upper rudder bracket, uh, clecoed up and with the rudder stop parts on, final drilled and just prepping things and getting it ready to go. Um, again, pay attention when you put things together. Uh, I inadvertently put one of the rudder stops on backwards, which you'll see me do and then go, wait a minute, and undo. Uh, I at least catch my mistakes, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, easy stuff. Um, no riveting this time. That's coming in the next video, which I'll have up here in a day or two. Um, very cool. I'm enjoying this. I'm having a hell of a, uh, a good time. Uh, putting together this plane. Uh, I hope that continues in this vein. I, I foresee it doing so, but yep, rudder stop. It's pretty important, I think. Anyways, see you later, guys. Talk to you later.